What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue with this top 15 uh, NBA centers list. And just to do a brief recap, at number 15, I had Nikola Jokic. Number 14, I had Robert Parrish. Number 13, Bob McAdoo. Number 12, Wes Unseld. Number 11, uh, Nate the Great Thurman. Number 10, Patrick Ewan. Number 9, Artis Gilmore. Number 8, George Mikan. Number 7, David Robinson. So at number 6, I have none other than Moses Malone. All right? Uh, Moses Malone is, in my opinion the most underrated great in the history of professional basketball. Um, I don't know why he is so, you know, I don't know. People just don't really warm up to him. I mean, I have my theories. My theories are, um, Part of it was his personality. He was not a media darling. He was not articulate. Uh, he definitely wasn't Madison Avenue. Um, the position that he played over the last 30 years or so, the center position has fallen out of favor with fans uh, as far as importance. And um, his style of play at center, he was physical, he was a workhorse. He was, you know, blue collar in how he approached the game. And aesthetically, even though you like that as a fan, for him to be on your team working hard like that, um, realistically, you know, fans tend to gravitate toward just looking at motherfuckers shooting threes. They can relate to that. They can relate to a Steph Curry more than a, a Moses Malone, you know. Most people are not six foot ten and two hundred and sixty pounds. <coughs> so they can relate more to Steph Curry than they can Moses. And you know, I guess there's nothing really wrong with that. Uh but you still gotta give these guys their just due. Uh Moses Malone, before LeBron James, was the greatest prep to pro player in the history of professional basketball. And um, he played for 21 professional league seasons. Uh, I know some people don't count the ABA years. I do. He started his career with the Utah Stars back in 1974 and ended it with the San Antonio Spurs in 1995. Uh, during his career... He scored 29,580 points, corralled 17,834 rebounds, and blocked 1,889 shots. He had career averages of 20.6 points per game, 12.2 rebounds, and 1.3 blocks per game. When you look at his resume, he won the NBA championship in 1982-83 on one of the greatest teams ever assembled, the 1982-83 Philadelphia 76ers. He won NBA Finals MVP that year. He was a three-time NBA MVP, 1978-79 season, 1981-82 season, and then the very next season, 82-83 season. He was a 12-time NBA All-Star. He was an ABA All-Star in 1975, four-time All-NBA first team, four-time All-NBA second team. In 1982-83, he was on the NBA All-Defensive first team. 1978-79, the NBA All-Defensive second team. 1974-75, the ABA All-Rookie team. Six times he led the NBA in rebounding. The first time... 1978-79 season. And then he would lead it uh, for five other seasons. 1980-81 through 84-85. He's on the ABA all-time team 
and he's on the NBA anniversary teams of the 50th, uh, 50 years, and posthumously on the 75th anniversary team that was announced a couple of years ago. His number 24 is retired by the Houston Rockets, and his number 2 is retired by the Philadelphia 76ers. But that's an honor that should have been done a long, long time ago. He is still the all-time leader, the official all-time leader, and offensive rebounds. Um, but that is largely, though, because during the times of Wilt Chamberlain, Bill Russell, and Nate Thurman, um, even though I, I don't think Nate would have had more offensive rebounds than him, but I guess the really I should say Wilt Chamberlain and Bill Russell, uh, they didn't count defensive rebounds versus offensive rebounds, not officially at least. So... You know, at the end of the day, Moses Malone has the record. Moses used to also have the record as far as most free throws made in a career. But that record was shattered by another Malone, if I'm not mistaken, Carl Malone, uh, before he retired. Moses Malone was born in Petersburg, Virginia, back in 1955. He was an only child. And um, he attended Petersburg High School, where I live at. Growing up, Moses Malone was a goddamn legend. That's why it's so hard for me to, to see him not be mentioned. Like, Moses was legendary here in Virginia. Um, in Petersburg, he played basketball for uh, Crimson Wave at Petersburg High School. The team went undefeated in its final two years, winning 50 games in back-to-back Virginia State Championships. And uh, Moses Malone was supposed to play college ball for University of Maryland. But he changed his mind. And I can understand his motivation, money. When he was selected in the third round of the 1974 ABA draft, he decided to go pro and earn money to play. So he played for the Utah Stars. At this time, he was around 6'10", 215 pounds. He wasn't the Moses Malone that we think of um, as the big hulking one. Uh, He was good. Uh, his, His first contract was five years, $1 million. I can understand why he decided to turn pro. That was the right decision for him. Um, He played for the Stars through the 75-76 season. And then he was sold to the ABA's Spirit of St. Louis. And this is when the ABA was just about financially kaput. You know what I'm saying? They were just about to fold. And... um, in two seasons in the ABA, Moses Malone averaged 17.2 points and 12.9 rebounds per game. After the NBA uh, ABA merger, Malone had been selected to play for the NBA's New Orleans Jazz. But then uh, the Jazz were allowed to place Malone in a dispersal draft in exchange for the return of one of their first-round picks in 1977. And in this dispersal draft, Malone was selected by the Portland Trailblazers. So then you got to say, well, I've never seen him play for the Portland Trailblazers. Well, the Blazers, who had also acquired power forward Maurice Lucas in the draft, chose Malone for trading purposes. For a front line of Lucas, uh, Bill Walton, and Lloyd Neal, Portland figured Malone would see little action. So then they traded him to the Buffalo Braves prior to starting the 1976-77 season for a first-round draft choice in the 1978 NBA draft. Malone played in two games with the Buffalo Braves, who, of course, now the Los Angeles Clippers. Because they could not meet Malone's demands for playing time, they then traded him to the Houston Rockets in exchange for first-round draft picks in 77 and 78. 
it is with the Houston Rockets that Moses Malone truly, truly became a dominant player. Uh, matter of fact, in his career with the Houston Rockets, in those six seasons, he averaged 24 points, 15 rebounds, uh, shot 51% from the floor, 74% from the foul line. Dude was a problem, man. And he took, he was such a dominant player. He won the MVP, like I said, 1978-79. And in 81, the first year I think they had moved to the Western Conference, 80-81, he took that team. If you look at that team, man, it is... It is not a great team at all. But somehow, he put that team on his back and took them to the NBA Finals, where ultimately lost to Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics. But the fact he took that terrible-ass team to the Finals is, is, is a testament to how great he was. And in his career with the Houston Rockets, he won two league MVPs. And I have to say, I seen a, uh, I seen a, uh, a pyramid of like Houston Rockets players with Elijah number one, which nobody can disagree with. But I'm sorry, James Harden is not on the same level as Moses Malone. I don't care how many points he averaged in this watered down era. The guy never took a team to a fucking finals. All right, he didn't. He did win one league MVP. But Moses won two as a Rocket, and he took a sorry-ass team, a team that wasn't nearly as talented as the 2018 Rockets, and took them to the finals. But anyway, 1981-82, Moses Malone had one of the great uh, seasons ever. That year, he averaged 31.1 points per game. Coming in second in scoring behind only George Gervin, I believe, who averaged 32.3. He led the league in rebounding at 14.7 boards per game, 1.8 assists, 1.5 blocks. He led the league in minutes, playing 42 minutes a ball game. 52% shooting from the floor, 76% from the foul line, got to the foul line, over 10 times a game. Dude was a complete workhorse, man. But that would be his last year in Houston. The Philadelphia 76ers acquired him prior to the 82-83 season. And I believe they acquired him in a trade. I gotta, I gotta look that up. Um, Malone became a restricted free agent after the 81-82 season. He signed an offer sheet of six years for $13.2 million with the Sixers on September 2nd, 1982. The Sixers were coming off a 4-2 loss in the finals to the Lakers, whose center career Abdul Jabbar outplayed their big man duo of Daryl Dawkins and Caldwell Jones. The Rockets franchise was sold, and the new owners decided that Malone's $2 million annual salary did not fit their plans. Houston matched the offer and agreed to trade Malone to the Sixers for Jones and their second round pick in 83 NBA draft on September 15th. Yeah, that's, that's how he was acquired. Um, the 1982-83 team, one of the greatest teams in the history of the NBA. One of the greatest teams in the history of the NBA. No doubt about it. Um, romped through the regular season. Completely dominated during the postseason. Lost one game, I think it was to the Bucks, And swept the Lakers in the NBA Finals. And in those finals, Moses Malone completely dominated the career of Dual Jabbar. Out-rebounded him something like 72-30. to 30. I mean, with just complete dismantling of one of the great players in the history of the game. Now, even though Moses Malone was with the Philadelphia 76ers, he still had ties to Houston. 
And during the off season, he would often go to Houston and, uh, you know, hang out with some of his old teammates. And it was at this time that he began to tutor Akeem Olajuwon as far as helping him work on his game. You got to remember at that time, Olajuwon was, was playing college at Houston. So he would work with Olajuwon, and this was how Olajuwon slowly became the phenomenal force that he would be by the early 1990s. Um, people anticipated that this Sixers team would repeat. Um, but it didn't happen. The next year, Dr. J started showing subtle signs of aging. Moses Malone started showing some sub subtle signs of slowing down. Um, and he also had injury issues. They weren't quite the same dominant team. And uh, ultimately, they lost the first round of the playoffs, which was a surprise, a shock. They lost to um, the New Jersey Nets, who at that time were led by, uh, what is his name, uh, the power forward. Um, oh, I can't think of his name, man. Um, Buck Williams. And then look, 1986, I'm just reading some stuff right here, man. So look, in 1986, by that time, he was definitely showing some signs of slowing down. The Sixers were showing signs that they were falling off as one of the dominant teams in the NBA. And also, of course, by this time, Charles Barkley, who was who was drafted in 1984, was being mentored by Moses. Uh, after some initial conditioning and weight issues, Moses got him to get down from 302 pounds to about 255 pounds, and he became a dominant force. So, you know, Moses, who was now about now averaging around 20, 20 points and 12 rebounds, they thought he was falling off, right? So they basically traded him for a peanut butter jelly sandwich and a half-eaten which I'm call it. I mean, I'm 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 exaggerating, but no, it's one of the worst trades in the history of the NBA. It was one of the worst trades, and ultimately, it set the Sixers franchise back ten years. They didn't start turning around until years after they acquired Allen Iverson. And I believe he was traded to the Washington Bullets. And he had some very productive years with the Bullets. Uh, he played there for about two years. Then he played three years in Atlanta Hawks. So into the 1990s, Moses Malone was a very productive center. And then afterward, he became a productive backup. Played with the Milwaukee Bucks in the early 1990s. And uh, went back to Philly one year. Now, by this time, he was a journeyman who wasn't playing many minutes. He was closing in on 40 years of age. And uh, he spent one final year with the uh, San Antonio Spurs in the 1994-95 year. He was a backup to David Robinson, who won MVP that year. I think the Spurs won 62 games that year. But ultimately, they lost in the Western Conference Finals. Um, his nickname was Chairman of the Boards because of how dominant he was in rebounding, as far as rebounding is concerned. Uh, there's some speculation that Moses intentionally missed certain shots to pad his rebounding numbers. And when I watch him play, I, I, I think when I watch footage of him playing, right, I think that's partially true. But I also think that he did that strategically. I think sometimes he would throw up what looked like a shot, but he knew where the ball would where the ball would come back to him.
because he, he just was an expert, a genius at rebounding. And I think sometimes he threw up what looked like a shot so he can get better positioning for a better shot, you know. But as far as just padding his rebounding total, I, I mean, I don't know, maybe. Maybe some games he did that shit, I don't know. But he held the NBA record. He held the NBA record for most offensive rebounds in a career, 6,731 in a season, 587 in a game, 21. 21 offensive rebounds in a game. And uh, earlier in his career, he had he had almost all the tools. During the years with the Houston Rockets and the early years with the Sixers, he had strength, he had quickness. Uh, you know, he, uh, he he had a jumper. I mean, he wasn't Patrick Ewing, but he had a jumper, I think out to maybe, someone could correct me, but I think out to maybe... 15, 16 feet, or at least 14 feet, he had a jump shot. And um, he was a great free throw shooting big man, you know, 76% for his career. Um, Moses Malone unfortunately passed away back in 2015. He was 60 years old. He died in his sleep from heart disease on the morning of September 13, 2015 at a hotel in North, uh, Norfolk, Virginia. He had been scheduled to play in a charity golf tournament that day and was found unresponsive in his room when he did not appear for breakfast or answer his phone. Malone had previously complained of an irregular heartbeat and was reported to have been wearing a heart monitor uh, when he died. And, uh, you know, his his passing was shocking. It was shocking, but um, you know, I guess it was just his time. But anyway, this is my sixth greatest center of all time, Moses Malone. I know, I was, I know this video was a little bit longer than normal, and I kind of wasn't as smooth as a lot of my other videos, but I was, you know, reading some information, and I was just thinking of different things I wanted to say about Moses. I have the utmost respect and affinity for him. But anyway, tell me what you guys think.